Well, after a few weeks dominating the AI image editing scene, Google's Nano Banana now faces real competition. Has the Banana Smasher arrived? We'll take a look today. Plus, I've got news on a VO3 price drop. I know it's not something we're used to hearing. Uh, they also snuck in an announcement about something that a lot of you have been waiting for. Kicking off a few days ago, yet another mystery model popped up on the artificial analysis leaderboards. This one codenamed DH3, and I am docking them points on the name when Plantain was just sitting there. Nevertheless, DH3 immediately caught some eyes, and well, the old game of new number who dis began yet again. Speculation quickly narrowed down to being possibly OpenAI, as they do have a pretty big update coming up for their GPT image model. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Or ByteDance with a 4.0 version of their image model model Seed Dance. And well, I mean, considering it dropped today, I can say with pretty high certainty that DH3 was indeed Seed Dream. It, it pretty much covers the same ground as Nano Banana. Uh, for example, taking a reference image, you can you know change the angles. I have found that Seed Dance 4.0 does possibly a little bit of a better job in terms of reversing the camera angle uh, than Nano Banana does. We'll take a look more at that later on. It's also capable of maintaining logos and, well, color consistency for things like style looks. And it can use input images as style references, so, you know, you can maintain a consistent aesthetic throughout, you know, a series of images. Additionally, like the GPT image model and, well, Nano Banana as well, uh, this does have knowledge-driven generation. So you can generate up infographic posters of the hidden dangers of staying up late, uh, prioritize sleep for a healthier life. You can't tell that to me, AI. You're the one that's keeping me awake all night. All of which does lead, of course, to the question, does this peel the banana? Oh, let's go find out. Uh, sea Dream 4.0 is now rolling out via API. Uh, currently, I'm using it on Fall. It is available also over on Replicate, and I'm sure by the end of the week, it will be everywhere. I will say that ByteDance is clearly setting this up to be a nano banana competitor, uh, considering that per generation, the cost is actually one cent lower than nano banana. Yeah, three cents per generation. I mean, that's not too shabby. So kicking off over on fall, mostly because I had like 20 bucks in credits over there. So this is gonna last me a while. Uh, we're gonna take this image of girl at coffee shop and remove her. We do have some settings down here as well. So uh, just make sure that you match to 16.9. Obviously you can do 4.3, 9.16, uh, you know, all of the standards. Uh, let's roll this, see what we get. And indeed, that AI-generated woman now no longer exists. Uh, generation time on fall took about 19 seconds, so not too shabby. I'll give you this was kind of a gimme shot, but you know, it, it did a pretty admirable job uh, considering that it did indeed remove the woman. Uh, we still get the same uh, light reflection in the window on both images. Uh, it did extend the cab over here, uh, and then interestingly added in a motion blur of another car over here. But you know, again, overall, really well done. In terms of changing framing and character consistency, Consistency. Yeah, it does a pretty good job uh, taking this image that we used a, a lot, what was it, last week or two weeks ago, of uh, the world's most depressed uh, office worker, and changing that out to a wide angle shot, uh, we end up with this. Man, I gotta say, Sea Dream 4.0 does not mess around when you ask for a wide angle. What is that, like a 20 millimeter lens, 15 millimeter? Uh, I mean, obviously a lot of like lens distortion around on the side, but again, that's what we asked for. Uh, the thing that was pretty impressive to me is the fact that, you know, again, all of the background location props, I guess we'll call them. Um, those do remain consistent to our input image. Our guy remains rock solid, our guy, right even down to the shirt uh, and sort of the pinstripe texture that he has in, in his shirt. Uh, and then on the right-hand side of the image, uh, all of that is essentially, you know, generated material like that did not exist in the input image, but does remain stylistically consistent to our input image, so well done. In terms of rotating the camera around 180 degrees, uh, this is something that Nano Banana definitely does struggle with. Sea Dream can do it, although, you know, as always, it's AI, so it's not necessarily perfect. So taking this image of four dark fantasy warriors who thought they were at the end of the movie only to discover that they are in a trilogy and they have all of those mountains to go through in film two. And the results, I gotta say, are pretty good. Again, considering that the model had no idea or information about what these characters look like, um, yeah, pretty solid. Some problems with this guy and his like short sword here in terms of how he's holding it. I'm pretty sure he gets made fun of quite a lot at camp for that. What I am super impressed with is the you know character consistency across both images. We have a you know, horned helmet guy here, uh, helmet guy, helmet guy, and then Captain L'Oreal here. And then that matches to that reverse angle image as well. But I did ask 
for a 180 degree turnaround and we don't really get that you know that would have essentially flipped the uh the positioning of all of these characters uh and it just does seem to me that uh, nano banana uh sea dream like all of them just seem to have a problem with breaking that 180 degree rule interestingly even when i did get a full 180 happening uh taking this shot the our couple that just learned that they are living in a simulation these last few days with you have felt like i'm living in a simulation i feel the same if we're prompts, I don't care. I want to marry you. Uh, we do end up with essentially, you know, a really impressive image of what is happening behind them uh, with our guys uh, in our, the white suits here, kind of like anchoring position, I guess. But uh, in terms of framing, um, if we had gone all the way around, our guy should actually be on the left and our woman should be on the right. Again, I know I'm being like super nitpicky about this and probably a little on the unfair side. I, I don't know, for some reason, this is my white whale. That said, again, concentrating on strengths, um, things like changing emotions, it does very well at. Uh, I did accidentally generate up this one in 1-1. One, one. Additionally, in another 1-1 one, one mistake, uh, it does also seem to handle over the shoulder shots really well. In terms of style transfer, style reference, uh, I did end up pushing things pretty hard. Your results may vary here, uh, depending on what you're aiming for. Uh, taking this piece of stock imagery, I, again, I don't know why this exists as stock, but I am happy it does. And then applying this image as a style reference, which again, I know this might be a little on the unfair side we ended up with this, which look, I can't get too mad at. It did match the colors and uh, I guess, you know, kind of made an attempt at, at sort of that sketchier look. It doesn't quite come off quite as intricate as our uh, reference image, but you know, still noble effort. Continuing on, I tried feeding in this image as a style reference, uh, kind of more in a like very intricate stop motion style. Uh, what, what surprised me, Sea Dream came back with this, which while it is not accurate to my input image is also actually kind of cool. Uh, it's one thing that I love about working with AI is that sometimes it'll just take a left turn and inspire you in a completely different direction. So overall, when it comes to style referencing, I'd say your best bet is, is just to kind of experiment and play around. And you know, luckily at three cents a pop, it's not not that big a deal. Now, in terms of multi-referencing images to create cinematic first frames, I think it does actually a pretty solid job. Uh, it might even be just a hair better than Nano Banana. That said, I do find that, you know, the more references you start cramming in, um, the more the model does start breaking down. Like, uh, you know, our character here is not quite the same character as, uh, you know, our initial input image because we added in another guy. So overall, I'd say if you're doing the multi-referencing thing, it can be done. It can also just be very quickly overloaded. Uh, one cool example, I just ran across this from Justine Moore, uh, two references here and then running it through Sea Dream. And I'm actually pretty impressed with this one considering that, you know, uh, Sea Dream did catch the character's reflection in the puddle and, you know, maintain stylistically consistent to that anime look. I do want to mention that it also does a pretty good job of following like on-screen directions. Uh, as we took a look at in the Nano Banana video, uh, where I just said, you know, place a distant castle here, Sea Dream came back with this, which looks really pretty good. To be honest, for my personal taste, uh, I actually think that at least from an aesthetic standpoint, this looks better than the Nano Banana output. I was also curious to see how like a creative the model could be. Uh, so I ended up just giving it this character and telling it to generate up comic book panels of this noir detective looking for clues in a crime city. Uh, and it came back with this, which, I mean, that's pretty cool. Now, does this make sense from a linear narrative perspective? No, it doesn't, but it does go to show that the model understood the assignment, you know, with things like uh, the, you know, the bloody uh, handkerchief here, uh, some grimy warehouse, uh, a scribbled note. Yeah, I mean, no, it understood what I was looking for. I just didn't provide it with any directions on what that was. Now, in terms of being a straight image generator, Sea Dream does seem pretty solid. Uh, checking in on our old pal, the man in the blue business suit, who we last saw uh, leaving Las Vegas. Well, he seems to be back on the road again with his wolf buddy, uh, and uh, I guess is wandering into a whole new chapter in his adventure. So while I haven't had a ton of time to play around with it as a straight image generator, uh, Fofer ran some tests using uh, the prompt img underscore 2094.cr2, just kind of calling it out as a digital photo basically, and ended up with results like this uh, in 4K as well. So um, yeah, this stuff looks very good. So I'm definitely gonna roll back on this just to check it out as just a straight uh, AI image generator because I mean, that, that looks good.
So at the end of the day is Sea Dream 4.0, the banana killer. I mean, you guys know me. I don't. I, I don't declare things dead. I don't. I don't say one thing killed the other. Uh, I think that both models are really great. They both have things that they struggle with. If anything, I'm excited about the fact that we now have two models that do AI image editing extremely well, and you know, basically for dirt cheap. So if you aren't getting what you're looking for out of one, well, there's, there's a whole other model to try out uh, and possibly a third one very soon as OpenAI is about to update their image model. This one is currently appearing in the LM Arena battle mode as uh, GPT Image 1 High Fidelity. Again, no clever name there. Thus far, I've only actually landed one test on LM Arena, but it did come out pretty good. Uh, you know, I got the full turnaround on this night. So uh, yeah, looking forward to testing this one out more. If any of you want to take a dice roll to see if you can get a couple of edits off with the uh, updated GPT image model, uh, the link to LM Arena is down below. So with another image editor waiting in the wings, let's see if I make five videos in a row about either of these. So with ByteDance and OpenAI on the rise, well, it's not like Google has been sleeping on the job. Uh, actually, they announced a pretty major price cut for VO3, which up until this point has been the highest priced video generator. So previous to this, the quality mode was available for 75 cents a second it is now down to 40 cents a second, while the fast mode has been reduced from 40 cents a second and is now 15 cents a second. And actually, if you guys want some bonus tips and tricks on uh, VO3 or really just AI filmmaking in general, you can check out my last video, which uh, does at least solve one major issue with VO3. In addition to that price drop, the long awaited, at least by some, uh, nine by 16 output in VO3 is now available. Hey guys, I guess I'm back. This time in 916, I'm ready for TikTok. It is good to have you back, pal. Google also announced that VO3, both quality and fast, uh, will now generate in 1080p as well, which is great uh, considering that the uh, you know previous method for doing so, you would have to come up, uh, hit the download button, and then uh, hit this upscale to 1080p, uh, which kind of works sometimes and would kind of freak out on, at other times. Uh, it could definitely be a bit finicky. Now, I presume there's not gonna be an additional charge for the 1080p output, uh, considering that the upscale again on the uh, Flow platform is free. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed there. In the meantime, uh, kudos to the Google gang for continuing the push. I am looking forward to seeing 1080 Yeti selfies, uh, you know, in vertical format, making the rounds again. So I guess that's it for today. Uh, I will definitely be circling back later on this week. Again, I want to check out Sea Dream and dive in a little bit more into like just the straight image generation aspects of it. Plus, you know, just kind of kick around on the editing aspect of it a little bit more. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see. In the meantime, there was that 10 tips video that I did last week. Uh, for some reason, it ended up getting a little bit buried. I thought there were some pretty good and practical stuff in there. So if you'd like to check it out, it is linked down below. Other than that, I think that's it for today, but I will definitely see you very soon. Thank you for watching. My name is Tim.